welcome and thank you for tuning in to the Elevate with Erica podcast. I'm your host, Erica. My mission is to connect with you through our stories and in that process, spread inspiration for you to go do amazing things with your life. I had crushed that this is the way to the perfect job, marriage and kids checklist and was left unhappy, stressed, living paycheck to paycheck and unfulfilled. I knew there had to be more to life than wishing away the week until Friday. And so I found that proof. And that's what I'm here to do for you and with you. Are you ready to create a life that gets you excited? Then elevate with Erica. Grab a bottle and get comfy, friends. It's time for some unfiltered advice. You guys, I want to share with you my favorite place to shop online. Zulily offers daily deals on thousands of items from up and coming brands and household names. You'll find a store full of new things every day, and you'll always get great value and free shipping on orders of $89 or more. Explore toys, clothing, and smart home finds, plus top beauty and wellness trends. Have fun shopping without breaking the bank or leaving your house. Save on clothes, toys, and home decor. New deals every day. That's my favorite part. New shops pop up every single day. Check the link in my show notes to check out Zulily today. Sorry for your new addiction. Hey, friends. Thank you for tuning back into Elevate with Erica and hanging out with me today. I need to address two things for my YouTube watchers first. Yes, I'm sitting in a different environment. So I didn't get what I asked for for Christmas. And it was a door (laughs) on my dining room that also serves as my office. So my husband is on night shift. And so he's here during the day. He sleeps until about 11 a.m. And so he's just waking up and washing dishes and making his breakfast and turning on his shows and doing his thing. Uh, My plan was to get this recorded before he woke up at 11 a.m., but you may be able to tell that I've got a little bit of sniffles and some congestion going down. And I gave my body a little extra rest this morning as it asked for. So didn't meet my time deadline. I'm sitting in my sunroom so that I can have a little bit of quiet to hang out with you all today. And so you don't hear all my husband's craziness happening inside. So also I will do my best not to be blowing my nose, um, for the sake of you guys watching on YouTube, you guys, I wish we were at happy hour right now, ordering a Mexican mule and just getting ready to catch up on life because that's the mood I'm in when I talk about the experience I'm getting ready to share with you today. And in case you guys don't know what a Mexican mule is, because I didn't until we all became home bartenders a few years ago, right? It's a mule with tequila. Not shocking, right? Anyway, so yes, I wish we were at happy hour catching up over a Mexican mule. You know, it can feel so scary to try something new something you don't know if you'll like or be good at. And I'm sure we all have in this very moment something that we're robbing ourselves of experiencing because we are scared to try something we haven't done before and get out of our comfort zone. Or maybe we just aren't even identifying ourselves with that thing, right? Like like we're saying, like, I'm not a skier. I do not run. I am not a person who goes out to eat alone. I'm not the type of person who walks into a party and meets new people. But when you actually do the thing, whatever the scary thing is for you, you can't wait to tell people about it. Like, even if you sucked at it, it just is such a cool feeling to know like you didn't die, right? Like you tried it. I mean, it feels better than wondering about it for the rest of your life, right? And I I get this rush when I'm sitting there in the thick of whatever the new thing is. So last year I talked about my first 5k experience and you know, a 5k is not that far, you know, but I still trained for it. And people let me know that I didn't need to train for a 5k by the way, (laughs) but I did. I'm like, okay, but wait, like, you don't know me when I do something, I want to give it my best. And I was not just showing up to this thing half-assed. I trained for it. Like I watched YouTube videos for tips on what to eat first, breathing techniques, playlist ideas, all the things prepped 30 days for something that took 20 minutes or okay, fine. Like 25 minutes prior to the 5k, I kept telling myself I'm not a runner. And even while I was out running three to four times a week, training for it, I told myself, I'm not a runner. 
But I did crave that feeling of what's it like to like run through a finish line? What does that feel like? I just didn't think it was it was in the cards for me, but I always thought, man, that must feel good. But I'm not a runner. I told myself. But I kind of wish I was, you know, it wasn't until I was actually in the middle of the 5k that I start to identify myself as a runner because I'm like looking around these people you know, all these people running alongside me, behind me, in front of me. And I'm like, okay, I'm here. I'm running with them. Who am I, first of all? But second of all, I'm doing this thing. I'm a runner. And it was this rush of, well, damn, like I had this ability all along. And I was just so proud of myself for getting out there. I wanted to tell everyone what I had just done. It wasn't just a 5k, not to me. It was like replacing this limitation that I had put on myself with proof that I am a runner. Well, I did something last week that I never thought I would ever do again. And I mentioned it on last week's episode that I was going skiing and that I would share the experience with you guys. I say I thought I would never do it again because I had gone with an ex-boyfriend and it was a horrible experience. And I basically didn't get any farther than getting my shoe in the ski. And then he left me standing there. So I went into the lodge while he skied. End of story. Ever since then, I've told myself, I'm not a skier. Leave me at the lodge. You go ski. I'll be by the fire with a cocktail. And if I'm being totally honest with you guys today, I would have been fine dying and never having skied. It wasn't like the running thing for me. I wanted to do that. Like I did cross country in high school until my parents couldn't have me to all the practices and I had to quit. But skiing, I don't love heights. I don't like to be cold for a long period of time. It's a sport that I like to watch on the Olympics, but not something I myself like felt like I ever like, oh, I just want to do that so bad. Well, my husband loves to ski. And let me just say this I'm about to share the story the experience, everything that came with my first day really skiing. And in that, there is nuggets of motivation and inspiration that I'll stop and share with you. But know that this episode may bounce around a little bit between, holy crap, I thought I was going to die too, but this is how it changed my life, okay? So I feel like everyone's going to be able to take something away from this experience. So back to my husband, he loves to ski. We've been together eight years and he hasn't gone since we've been together, mainly because he hasn't really had anyone to go with. He brings it up every winter though. And with each winter that passes, I'm like, I'm off the hook, right? Like, like the truth is I'm also not totally comfortable with heights, like I said. And so that's an additional fear of mine that ties into skiing. And the idea of the lift alone sounds scary to me. Like, even if you told me we were taking a lift up to like this really cool bar, I would still be scared to death, but it would be more an incentive to go if I knew there was like this really cool bar at the top. (laughs) But then I would quickly probably remember that the only way down is down that slope, right? But I'm scared to even get on the lift even without having to then go down a mountain on skis after. So yes, every year that he didn't plan the trip for us, because I I surely wasn't going to plan it. Every year that he didn't plan it, I was like, okay, I don't have to face that fear. But the year has come where he planned the trip. And he gave me a week's notice, by the way. Of course, he wasn't forcing me, but I knew when the day would come that he would finally book it, that I wouldn't say no. I'm all about at least trying things. And I know that he loves this thing. And I didn't give it a fair try the first time. It's probably good that he didn't that he didn't give me more time to prepare because it wrecked me that week leading up to it, which I also talked about in the last episode. I was just so scared to go. And guess what? I went still scared to death. <laughs> Maybe not as scared. I don't know. I think I am still just as scared. Of the, of the entire sport. But now, now that I got a taste and saw those people zipping around me on their skis, I kind of want it. I kind of want to be good at that. Seeing like seven-year-olds just fly down the mountains like a freaking pro on the smallest damn skis I've ever seen. I didn't even, I didn't even know that they made skis for someone that small. Like that was amazing to me. 
I don't know how, when do you start even training a child where they're so good at skiing at that age? And it made me feel so foolish holding back deers on the bunny slope, by the way. But seeing those people, like, I kind of want to be able to do that. I'm nowhere near that level, but now I want to keep trying. So yes, I liked it. I think I never smiled the entire day. Well, I did smile holding my craft beer in the lodge, but I never once smiled on skis. Okay. But I did like it. Maybe that's not what I should be calling it. Maybe it's just the fact that I love a challenge and I'm competitive and it brings out that within me. I'm just still really freaking scared, you guys, but feeling really determined to get better at it. But that was one of my takeaway lessons from the experiences and, and from the experience. And probably my my favorite takeaway lesson is that it's okay to be scared. And I do have to take a deep breath when I say that, because that's a hard one for me. I would even go so far as to say that it's a good thing because I took such a life-changing lesson away from that experience. So it must be a good thing. It means that you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. You're pushing yourself to a place where growth and change can happen. And I think that's what we're all here to do. And I have this desire, okay, to speak on stage one day. And I know that I'll be scared. But what this skiing experience taught me is that maybe I'll always be scared. Maybe I'll always be scared every time I go skiing. Maybe I'll always be scared every time I get on stage, no matter how many times I do it. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't do it. That was freaking life-changing for me. And look, I am not telling you to go out and do something that feels life-threatening like skiing feels to me. I'm so terrified of breaking something. My husband has broken bones before, and I, I haven't really. Like, I think I sprained my pinky when I was little and I chipped my nose. Like I got hit with a baseball on my nose um, at one of my son's games, but I haven't really broken anything. Okay. And I don't desire to also without a healthy body, my job as a fitness coach becomes a real challenge, right? So I'm saying what I am saying, you don't have to go do something that feels that terrifying to you, life-threatening. But that thing that you're not identifying with because it scares you or because you think you'll suck at it, but yet you're still like wondering about it. It still catches your attention every time you see someone else doing it. I truly believe that that's showing up in your life for a reason. I don't know the reason. I'm not saying you won't suck at the thing. I suck at skiing. But maybe there's some lessons in trying the thing that you need to elevate your life. Skiing was life-changing for me. Embrace the things that scare you. It's a powerful experience. It's powerful when you realize what you're capable of, when you move not without fear, but despite it. And I realize now that my goal is not to be fearless. Like I'm thinking about, do I have, do I own anything that says fearless on it? Cause I want to throw it away because that's not my goal. My, my goal is to not let fear stop me. You guys, that is huge. I'm an Enneagram three shout out to my fellow three people, because when we do something, we like want to be the best at it. And it can hold us back a lot of times because it can keep us from exploring new things. We are really good in our comfort zone. And so we stay there. And we crave achievement, but if we don't think we can excel at something, then we don't do the thing. And now I realize the achievement is not in being the best at the thing. It's in the trying, in the journey, in the lessons you get to take away. And that is life-changing for me, y'all. It's a weight off too. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be fearless. That's a tall order. Are you waiting until you're ready to do something, whatever ready means. We miss out on things by waiting and tomorrow is not promised. I don't have to practice until I'm not afraid to speak on stage. I will go on stage scared. I don't have to wait until I'm not scared to go skiing next time. I'm just going to go. And maybe I'll be a little scared every time I go for the rest of my life. 
But what if we embrace fear and stop trying to become fearless? What would that open up for you? How much more would you try? How much more would we allow ourselves to experience? And first I have to say that my husband was great at teaching me the basics and nothing I will say in this episode, despite how it may sound, is to intentionally speak negatively about him. We both had a bit of a learning experience that day. Mine was in skiing and his was in what it's like to learn to ski. On the three and a half hour drive to the slopes and the days leading up to it, he just kept saying, when we are on the lift, talking about the chairlift, when we are on the lift, when we go down the mountain, et cetera. Like I was going to do all of this on one day, he thought. So he was going to teach me how to ski. We were going to be going down the mountain all in the same time. We were only there for, I think I did the math, like eight hours. I skied for about six hours of it. It was just a drive up, drive back kind of trip. And I thought to myself, I'm no expert, but I think it takes a little bit longer to learn to ski. But I didn't want to be a party pooper. So I kept my fears to myself and I truly didn't know. I don't know anyone that skis. I don't have any experience in this. He insisted that I needed no lessons. He was so excited. And I also appreciated his faith in me, but I thought he was a little bit nuts. I mean, I'm just, I'm just being honest. So when you're at the little bunny slope where everyone goes to learn the basics, where there's like little classes being taught and some people one-on-one with instructors and some kids being taught by their parents. And then there's like two couples, us being one of them, where the husband is trying to teach the wife. You probably don't see too much of that because people know better. But anyway, here we are. So there's like two bunny slope slopes, one that starts at the midpoint of the higher one. And there's like a flat, a small flat surface between the two. So my husband begins teaching me how to even just move in skis, like how to kind of push off with the poles and glide on a flat surface. And honestly, even this was a challenge for me. That way of moving my body as someone who doesn't skate in any kind of way, it's just not something I've done before. And we really didn't have that much room. Like I said, there's like classes going on. You know, there was a lot of people in a small area, which let me tell you, all the people flying around you is a whole additional aspect of skiing that makes the experience even scarier for a beginner. I don't skate. I don't rollerblade or anything like that. So I was the kid at Skateland. I don't know if you guys grew up with like a skating rink around you. Ours was called Skateland. Holding on to the wall the entire time. I was there for the music, the pizza, the candy, and the cute boys. I was not there to skate. Okay. Rollerblading is very similar. Like your body moves in a very similar way as to how it looks when people are skiing. So if you can do that, I imagine you pick up skiing pretty fast. Like my husband, there's no wall when you're skiing, right? There's just like this big, scary mountain. And you swear if you fall off the side of it, like you're just, you're dead. Okay. There could have been pizza and beer and candy. That would have gave me a little bit of an incentive, (laughs) but my husband was not about that. So prior to this trip, I always envisioned my first trip skiing with my husband would be with couples. And I hoped I would have like another wife to hide in the lounge with. It didn't, it didn't really work out that way so much. So anyway, I'm pushing off and I'm trying to glide around for about five minutes. Honestly, I sucked just at that. Like I really still haven't mastered that yet. And I feel like that's probably pretty important. (laughs) And my husband's like, okay, ready to go on surface lift now. So the surface lift is like those moving walkways that you ride on in an airport. Instead of, you know, walking slowly, like you just step on these things and they kind of glide you faster. But this one is going uphill, of course. So I'm going to be honest with you guys for a second and tell you that I'm intimidated just to get on those things in the airport, in my regular shoes. (laughs) I was truly scared just to get on this thing in skis. And so I'm telling him, I'm like, what happens when you get off of the thing? What does it look like up there? Because you can't tell from where we are, but I could see enough to know that it was a little downhill slope and some people were falling off of it. 
I just learned how to glide on a flat surface for like 15 minutes. And now you want me to get, get on a surface lift and go down a hill while people are coming off the lift, like right behind me. What if someone falls in front of me? I don't know how to go around them. What if it's a child? I don't want to run over a child. You guys, I'm not kidding when I tell you insane things were running through my mind at this point. My brain was working in overtime to keep me comfortable. My brain is telling me all the reasons why I cannot do this. I'm going to suck at this. I'm going to hurt myself or someone else, right? Because your brain works to keep you comfortable. So your brain isn't going to tell you on its own. Yeah, Erica, just go fly down the tallest freaking mountain. You might die, but there's only one way to find out. Like your brain is not telling you that. No, my brain was saying, you're going to suck at this. Go in the lodge and get a freaking beer. That's where you belong. And I have no one to hear my fears or my doubts in this moment because my husband is like, okay, next task. In his mind, I am getting on that chairlift today and I'm going down a slope. <laughs> okay. So anyway, now picture this. I sidestep my way up a bunny slope so that I can see what it looks like when I get off the surface lift. I just didn't want any surprises. I needed to envision what I was going to face. So now let's talk about getting on the surface lift. There's an uphill leading up to it. Uh, Of course there is, right? Like let's watch beginners try to go up a hill on skis because that's fun. So my husband, of course, just goes up the hill like nothing. And I proceed to follow after him. And guess what? Not learning how to glide for longer than five, 10, 15 minutes showed up at this moment because I slide right on backwards. And you guys, there's people right behind me trying to get on. So remember, this is a busy spot. Now, not only am I scared to ski, I'm afraid to get off the surface lift and afraid of heights, even though the bunny slope is like a bunny slant, probably. Now I also feel like a total idiot because you are also like, you don't want to look stupid, you know? So I'm also kind of facing that fear as well. Guess what? My husband did not care about any of those things. (laughs) Zero sympathy, zero enabling. I was getting on that surface thingy, whether I wanted to or not, which in the moment I was crying and scared inside. But looking back, he's a huge reason why I made the progress that I did that day. He didn't tell me, okay, never mind. Let's go back over there and keep standing on a flat surface, even though I definitely did need more practice just gliding around. No, with every small basic skill I learned, he was like, okay, next. So I sidestep up the small little anthill to get on the surface lift. And as I'm riding this thing, I'm like, holy, you know what? I have trouble stepping on these in shoes, let alone in these skis that I've been wearing for about 20 minutes now. There's definitely some internal dialogue going down, right? In that moment, one part of me is terrified and the other part of me wants me to stop being a wimp. It's telling me to shut up. You're strong. You got this. Look at all these other people doing it. Y'all, there's literally kids in line behind me probably wanting me to hurry up. You're just as capable as them, I'm telling myself. My competitive spirit was in there rooting for me, for sure. I had my husband go before me in case I fell, and so he could help me up. (laughs) But I successfully got off and on the surface lift. Okay, little confidence boost. I got this, right? Oh, but then I make the little turn and see that now it's time to go down the, the slope for the first time. I hadn't fallen yet at this point. So I told myself, well, I'm probably going to fall when I go down this thing. So I tell my husband, I need you to help me simulate a fall. Okay. I need to know how to fall and know that I can get up. You guys, this is all my Enneagram three and my planning. This is all coming out right now, right? I need to know these things. So he goes off to the side and he shows me how to fall. If I feel myself losing control. So I follow right behind him and I fall like he did on like the side of my left butt cheek. Okay. No big deal. I wasn't afraid to fall. I was more afraid I wouldn't fall properly in this contraption that I'm in and I would injure myself and that I wouldn't be able to get back up and I would be alone. So he teaches me how to get up too. And I couldn't get straight up from a fall. Those of you that ski may know what I mean. So he shows me how to unlock one boot from its position, stand up and then clip the boot back in. All right, so it's time to go down the bunny slope. Down I grow. 
struggled with using the pizza thing. Um, if you, again, if you ski, you probably know what I mean, but like you point your toes in and your heels out to make the shape of a pizza helps you slow down or come to a stop. So he didn't tell me though, that you have to also at the same time that you're doing that dig in with like the inner sole of your foot. You have to dig in into the snow at the same time to kind of come to a stop. Otherwise you're just going to glide like a pizza. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I got it down. I didn't fall. I made it. Okay. I did it. Now, can I just go stand over there for a minute and like gather myself from what I just did? Like that was terrifying for me. Nope. Nope. He says, okay, let's go again. So I did it another time. Didn't fall. Still getting used to the surface lift and getting off and on it and trying to get better at slowing down. Mind you, there's people standing everywhere at the bottom of the slope. So I'm trying really hard to get this down so I don't run anyone over, you know, right? So I've gone down this bunny slope twice. You guys, we haven't even been there an hour yet. And I've been shown the basics and gone down the bunny slope twice. That's how fast my husband is escalating the learning experience. God bless him. So he says, okay, you ready for the next higher bunny slope? Here's where I was really struggling internally because I have no gauge as to how quickly someone is supposed to be able to do all these things, but I feel like it can't be this fast, but I also don't want to be a wimp. So on the other hand, I'm like, I'm tough. Just suck it up, Erica. He must know what he's talking about. I mean, he's good at this, right? So despite being scared out of my mind, I follow him up to the highest bunny slope. Holy you know what y'all when I got up there and looked down, it felt like I was at the top of Mount Everest. I am not kidding. Again, I have this fear of heights as well. So I get nauseous, literally watching my husband hang the Christmas lights. I get so scared up there at the top of this highest bunny slope that something took over me. I got off that surface lift, looked down the slope, felt intense fear and realized my only way out of this situation is down this slope. That's my only way out of this fear. I have no choice. I looked at my husband and I glided right on past him. And I said, if I don't go down this right now, I'm not going to do it. All that happened in just a matter of seconds, y'all. And I went and I practically left him. I had to get off the top of that slope and pronto. Well, I fell fairly quickly because I started going faster than I was comfortable with. I was so scared, like tears in my eyes scared. My husband can't even really see that because I'm so bundled up and I've got like these ski goggles on, but I'm terrified. And I fall and I get so mad at myself for falling that suddenly I used all that anger Suddenly I could push straight up from a fall. I could do what I couldn't do a minute ago when I simulated a fall. I was like, and I dug my poles in the ground and just stood straight up. And my husband's like, there you go, babe. And I'm like, I'm like pissed, right? (laughs) I'm, I'm grunting. I stood right up. Whoop. There I go again. Okay. I fall again, a little ways down. I proceeded to fall about three times in total, just to get from the highest bunny slope to the smaller one. So just to get to that small flat surface between the two bunny slopes. So I'm standing on the little flat surface and I'm getting ready to go down to the bottom. And I'm frustrated this at this point. Like I want to quit so bad. I don't know why I'm here. I suck at this. I want to go home. I'm not saying any of this out loud, but my husband sees my frustration and says, what would the Erica who shows up on her Instagram do right now? I said, she would take all this shit off and go get a beer. Like I was done y'all. Okay. I am so frustrated by this point. And it felt like my husband thought I should be doing all these things with ease. And internally I'm like, can I just keep practicing moving on a flat surface? I make it down both bunny slopes. And he says, okay, ready to go back up. Let me just tell you right here. Took a lot of self-control. I never got up to that highest bunny slope again that day. It was just that one time, fell three times going down, never went back up there again. You guys, we've maybe been there an hour and a half at this point, and I'm working through a lot of fears in my mind. And this is a huge leap for me to even be here. 
I can't work through these things with his added pressure and the expectations that he came with that day. So I looked at him and I said, I think you should just go to the other slopes. You're really good at this. Go have fun. I am fine. I need to go through the repetition of these basic moves. And there's no reason for you to be here while I do it. Thank you for teaching me the basics, but please go. Seriously, I'm fine. I'll be right here. He says, okay, but promise me that you'll keep trying. I mean, let's be honest. He assumed he'd find me at the bar and I'd be lying if I said it didn't cross my mind, but I promised I would continue to try. So this may actually be the moment I was the most proud of myself. Now, not only have I done all these things in an hour and a half of skiing for my first time, I'm also now on this surface lift alone. I'm skiing alone. I literally had tears filling my eyes as I was on that thing. I looked around and thought, I'm like sliding, gliding up this thing. And I'm like, holy shit, Erica, you are doing this. Like you are amongst skiers right now. You are skiing. And then I realized, oh crap, like it's time to get off this freaking thing. Why can't skiing just be riding around on a surface lift all day, by the way? Like that would be so fun. Okay. But it was time to get off. And I felt my fear bubbling. And I said, Erica, you got this girl. And I glided off that thing like a pro. I didn't want to look foolish and I wanted to have it, you know? So then I went down that, that slope probably not looking like a pro, but I didn't care. I was doing it. I was skiing. I did this many times. I didn't even remember how many, but I didn't fall. Okay. Until of course, the time my husband comes to find me and he gets behind me on the surface lift and doesn't say anything. And he follows me down the slope and I fall. He skis up next to me and says, you fall so gracefully. (laughs) I was like, I'm Mm -hmm. So I grew so much in that time alone, though. No one in my ear telling me, okay, next. It was just me pushing against my own limits. It was me and the voice in my head proving to myself what I was capable of. And I just needed that repetition, y'all. We agreed to take a quick break, grab one beer and come back out. So I tell him about my experience alone while we're having a beer and how I needed that comp- repetition and how it built my confidence and and I that I still needed a lot more of it. And this is where his learning experience was uncovered. He admitted that when he was on the beginner slopes, that I was not there yet to the level of those people, that it was more to it than he thought. And he said he didn't even remember learning to ski himself, but he did know how to rollerblade. And that gives a huge advantage, y'all. He grew up in the mountains in PA. I grew up at the beach in Maryland. I explained that just learning the skill isn't enough. There is a confidence that goes with it. And that confidence comes from repetition. But let me tell you, even after that conversation, he's still talking about getting me on the chairlift and says, maybe after dinner. Um, no. Okay. I didn't say that out loud. (laughs) But after being with other people having their first day on the bunny slope too, I knew my husband's expectations were way too high. And I just flat out knew that I personally wasn't ready and I wasn't going to be ready that day. And I tell him as we were sitting there at the bar that my ankles really hurt in these boots. Like we rented this equipment, you know, I didn't want to buy a bunch and I don't know if I'm going to like the sport. So he's like, yeah, my ankles hurt too. I said, I kind of want to take it off, but I'm afraid it'll hurt worse to put it back on. He agrees with me. And so we finished the beer and I went back to the bunny slope and he went back to his slopes. I never fell again, but I just kept going up and down that first bunny slope. I was enjoying it truly. Wasn't much of a slope, but I was getting my bearings. You know, I was working through my own stuff. Okay. I knew I was doing something that I was going to be really proud of at the end of the day. I was having a great time until the temps dropped and the snow turned from soft snow to a sheet of ice. And I couldn't even get my ski pole through it without like stabbing it into the ground. And even then it would barely go through. And in case you don't know, that makes skiing on it very challenging when you're not comfortable going very fast yet. It's going to make you go a hell of a lot faster. If you're not totally efficient at slowing down and coming to a stop, 
is not for you. So I caught on to the fact that the other beginners on the bunny slope were struggling. And I heard um, another, the other wife that was there with the one other couple, I heard her telling her husband the same thing that I was thinking in my head, but she was telling her husband in Spanish. Thanks, mom. I'm glad I could understand what she was saying because it let me know that I wasn't just being a wimp for having a hard time. Also, my ankles really hurt at this point. The snow was a sheet of ice. I'm hungry. I had had enough. And I was, I was proud of myself. Like I was good stepping away at that moment. So I just stand and I watch people on the bigger slope ski and wait for my husband. He comes, we go grab dinner. The whole time we are eating, I know I'm done, but I don't tell him. I really didn't want to disappoint him. And he was having such a great time. Mind you, we have been there about six hours at this point, And I would be perfectly fine sitting by myself and relaxing. I had been up since 4.30 a.m. that day. It's like 7 p.m. at this point. My ankles hurt. The snow is ice. Mentally, I had already overcome a lot that day. And I was truly just mentally, physically dead. And I just knew that he wouldn't want to leave me. But I really just wanted him to. Like he was out doing something he enjoyed. I could be in here doing something I enjoy. Like I'm good with that. So he says, all right, we're going back out. And I let him know that the snow was too challenging for me at that point to learn on. And then I think I've had enough for the day. You go, I'm fine. I talk him into it. And he goes, I had a great time standing at the bottom of the slopes and watching people come down. It was fascinating fascinating to me. The way people can move on those things. Truly inspiring, especially the small children. They were just amazing. I want to be able to do that. I'm scared, but I want to keep trying. It's unfortunate that we live so far away. Three and a half hours is our closest because you shouldn't learn to ski in a sporadic, like one day experience at a time. But maybe one of these times we will stay for a few nights, maybe split a house with a few friends. That's truly what you really need. So when I got home the next day, like I thought to myself as I was making breakfast, I'm like, damn, I, I would really like to go back out on the slope right now and keep, give it another go, you know? But anyway, so we head inside to take off and return our rental equipment. And let me tell you, I can't wait to get the ski equipment off of me. I sit on the bench and I'm trying to get out of the boots and I'm like, how do you unhook these things? I'm asking my husband, right? And my husband says, hold on a minute. As he's trying to get everything out of the locker, internally, I'm like, excuse me, this is an emergency. (laughs) Can you get the things out of the locker in a minute? Y'all, my ankles were screaming to get out. I'm tired at this point. I'm thinking about the three and a half hour drive home. I'm trying to remain calm as he's taking things out of the locker. So he does this thing. And then he sits down next to me and takes off his boots so that I can see what to do. I'm like, okay, you could have just told me that 30 seconds ago. But anyway, (laughs) forgive me. I was tired. So I get this boot off and holy crap, y'all, my ankles were even more on fire than when I had the boots on. I tell him, I'm like, oh my God, my ankles hurt really bad. Look. And he looks and it looks like, you know how, like when you sleep hard and you've got wrinkles like down your arm or side of your face or whatever from the sheets or your pajamas, whatever it is. But these on my ankle are bright red. And he says, yeah, Mine look like that too. Look, that guy over there saying his ankles hurt too. Everybody's ankles hurt. Okay, I say, you know, I'm not a complainer in general. Again, I have no gauge on what this is supposed to feel like. (sighs) I want to get my mom on the show sometime. So I can tell you a little backstory on why I am the way that I am. But I don't complain for just anything. I can be sick at home and my kids and my husband will have no idea because I just don't say anything. They don't know until then they get sick. And I'm like, oh yeah, I've had that the last few days. (laughs) It's a mental thing for me. I do believe our thoughts have incredible power. And so when I'm sick, I just don't give it a voice. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just telling you this is me. (laughs) Unless I'm like truly can't get out of bed sick, of course, right? My husband apparently does not know this about me yet. Uh, So I wake up the next morning at home and head to my workout space in my garage and I've got my foot up and I'm like tying my shoes and I have a ring around both ankles of blisters. Holy crap. I knew it. I told myself 
I knew you weren't being a wimp. <laughs> okay. I, I had no gauge as to what wearing ski boots was supposed to feel like. So I hung on every word my husband told me that day. Like when I asked him what to wear skiing, because I don't want to spend money on ski clothes if I don't have to, not knowing if I'll even like the sports. And he said he wore like insulated underwear with jeans on top and then ski pants on top of that. So that's what I did. Bad idea. Do not wear jeans skiing, friends. Yes, I had thick socks on too, but those jeans dug into my legs all day long. You know what though? I feel like it gave me a little street cred. (laughs) Another little reason to be proud of myself. I mean, I'd rather not have had the blisters, but I had done so much more than I thought I could that day before. And I was scared through every step of the way. And I did it with the damn blisters. Okay. I'm kind of feeling like a badass now. You know what, guys, this may have seemed like a silly story about me on a bunny slope all day and blisters, but I gained so much from this experience and I'm so glad I didn't rob myself of it by allowing fear to stop me. And just that one day, that one experience changes the way I look at so many things that I'm scared to do right now. Like I am now excited. It's a stepping stone. It's further proof that I'm capable of doing hard things. I'm so excited for where I can, what else I can do now, where else I can go. And that's something that I think we have to continuously do. We have to keep challenging our limits. The ceiling will raise and then you will challenge the next ceiling, the next limit. And that's how we elevate our life. That's how we get to the next level. That's how we meet the best version of ourselves. If I could have you take one thing away from this scary experience of mine, from this episode today, it would be to go try the thing. Maybe it's as small as going out to eat by yourself, taking yourself to a movie, striking up a conversation with another parent at your kid's next thing, reaching out to someone online that inspires you, creating a connection, trying out the new workout class, joining the gym, taking a cooking class, like going to a new restaurant instead of the ones you always do, try a new sport, take dancing lessons, road trip to somewhere that you've never been. Take a class at a local community college, like just try something new. The list could go on and on. My watch is talking to me now. The list could go on and on. I'm sure you guys could come up with even more things. Something that will push you out of your comfort zone. Focus on not whether or not you're going to be good at it, because that's what I focus on before I think about if I want to do something. That's the truth, but not after this experience. Don't focus on whether or not you're going to be good at it, but focus on what you'll get to take away from trying something new. What will it feel like to have tried it? Would you be proud of yourself? Because if so, then go freaking do it. Like stop watching people live lives that you want, do things you want to try. It's okay to love the life that you're in today, but want more. Keep going for more. Keep trying. Stop seeing fear as the stop sign, right? And see it as a moment to ask yourself, are you serving yourself a platter of BS to keep you playing small? Is this something that you're curious about, but you're telling yourself you're just not the person who does that? Why can't you be? Why not? Ask yourself, why not? I hope you got a few laughs and lessons out of my ridiculous ski story today. I'm no Lindsay Vaughn, that's for sure. (laughs) But hey, I took away some life-changing things from the experience, and I am so freaking proud of myself, y'all. Try something that can serve your life in the same way. Tell me what it is. Reach out to me on social and let me know or tag me when you do the thing. Let me know how you're elevating your life in 2023 with something new. And as always, thank you guys for spending your time with me today. If you connected with this episode, please go leave a podcast rating and review if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button so that we can hang out together more often. Or if you know someone who might connect with the show, share it with them. Your help in the growth of the show over the past two years, it means so much to me, friends. Talk soon, guys. Until next episode. Peace.